Hi everybody. Welcome to Paper Crafting Saturday. I'm Leslie Watkins and we're at Dandelion Cottage. I'm just checking to make sure you can hear me okay. Okay, that looks good. Hi, so thank you for joining me today. I wanted to make a really cute little uh, shadow box frame for Father's Day. I had seen something on the uh, that Rhonda Wade made and I loved it. So I thought it would be fun to try to recreate it for Father's Day. So let me give you a little preview. This is, this is the box, okay, and it's, it's a little sailing scene. But today I'm going to just show you how to get started because uh, otherwise the video would be too long. And, um, and all we're going to do is make the shadow box, and I'm going to show you how I paint the background with ink. And then um, I think in, in another week or so I'm going to offer this as an online class in time for Father's Day. And if you'd like to learn more about my online classes, go to dandeliancottagedesign.com and subscribe to Notes. And I will send you all the information that you need to know to, to sign up. Um, and also what uh, measurements and materials and everything else that you'll need. So let's get started. The inspiration for the card is this stamp and die set. Okay, so this is Sailing Home and it has all these beautiful nautical images plus these great sentiments. I love the anchor particularly. I like the style of this old engraving sort of look. And then it comes with these dies. If you get the bundle, you get them at 10% off. This is called Smooth Sailing and there are 12 of them. And we're going to use a bunch of them for this project, but, but that's later. So just for today, I have half a sheet of watercolor paper. Okay. And this is the, uh, the Fluid 100 cold press watercolor paper, and I've just cut it right in half. And so let me check the measurement for you on that. So it's about six inches by four and a half. And I'm just gonna give it a little spritz And today I'm going to be painting with ink. So um, the ink I'm going to be using is Balmy Blue. So I'm going to make a very dilute mixture. I just want a little bit here. And I'm going to use this in the sky. And I'm just I'm just making some random clouds. I'm using I'm leaving some white on the page. Something like that. And I'm I'm keeping it very much on the light side with a with a few little areas getting darker. Okay, so that's, that's all I need to do with that right now. And I'm just taking my paper towel and wiping my brush to clean it. Actually, I think I'm going to add a little bit more over in this area here. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to put this aside to dry while we're working on the shadow box. Just 
just removing those drips from the sides. I don't want the pigment to build up in those areas. Okay. I had a bear on my front porch last night. I heard it and, uh, and I had a feeling I knew what that thumping sound was, so I turned the porch light on and then opened the door and there he was. I had a, a bunch of, um, what are they, black walnut husks that I want to make ink out of and he was poking around in there to see if there was something for him to eat. So I chased him away and I rang the cowbell at him and off he went. <laughs> so here is a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. This is um, crumb cake. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trim one end of it. So I'm going to take off three quarters of an inch. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want the box to be rectangular. I don't want it to be a perfect square. And then all I'm going to do is score that in three quarter inch increments. And we're gonna do that four times on each side. So that would be uh, three quarters one and a half, two and a quarter, make sure you have it nice and square, and three. And just keep doing that all around. So if you wanna go grab a cup of coffee while I'm doing this, this would be a good time. So again, that's three quarters, one and a half, two and one quarter, and three. Now, if you have a, a scoreboard, you can do it on your scoreboard too. And if you don't have a trimmer or a scoreboard, you can use a you can use a ruler and uh, some sort of a stylus that will give you a nice a nice score line. I'm using my trimmer because it's handy and it does two jobs in one and I don't have a lot of space right here. Okay, one more side. Now I'm going to be showing you how to do this a little bit differently from the way you may be accustomed to doing that. And I'll show you why in just a second. This adds just one more little step, but I think it makes a big difference. So, on, in, in the original version, you see you have the, you can get these little gaps in the corners, and I didn't like that. So I'm going to show you how to reinforce the box, make it sturdier, and also get rid of those little gaps. So this is what you do. Um, figure out which is your longer side. So this is, this is my longer side. So I'm going to cut on the short side. And 
and I'll show you what I'm doing in just a second so you can see it better. Okay. So in the original version, this entire corner was removed. And what I'm suggesting that you do is to leave a little tab. And what you want to do with that little tab right there is to just give it a little angle to remove the excess material, okay, so that you have something like that. And you're going to do that on each side. So you end up with something that looks like that. We're going to do that on the other side as well. And when I'm making these tiny angle cuts, I'm removing the uh, little bump that's created by the score line as well. And that just helps to make a, a, neater, a neater cut. Hang on to these little pieces, they can be handy later. All right, so there's what we have so far. And I'm just going to score all these folds and having your uh, bone folder is really important for this because you want to have these very crisp, sharp edges. So just going right around. There we go. Okay, so what you end up with is something that's going to come together like this, all right? But what we need to do is to miter the corners so that you get a, a, nice, a nice miter just like that. Okay, so I'm going to trim away two sections here, like so. And I'm just eyeballing this. You can measure it. It should be three quarters of an inch. Basically, if you see that it makes a perfect square, you know you've got it. 
So take away two sections of that, like so, and then you're just going to Let me get in there. There we go. You're just going to miter that corner like so. I'll do the same thing here. Okay. So trimming up two squares. Then giving it a miter cut going from corner to corner, like so. And one more. Okay. So that's all the cutting. You need to do so you end up with something that looks like that now take your tear and tape and you're going to place this get my pointer right along this edge so on the outermost flap you're going to put the tear and tape closest to the score line. Just like that. Do that all around. Okay, if you have a little bit left over like that, you can put that on the tabs. Okay. We're halfway there, folks. So now, I find it helps if you give the tear and tape a little bit of a burnish because it helps it to stick better and it also helps the um, the backing to come away a little bit easier. Let me get these other two tabs. There we go. All right. Now now put that aside for a second and come back to our painting. All right, so this is um, slightly damp, but that's okay. I'm gonna grab my, my stamp set and I'm gonna take the Lighthouse, I'm gonna take the Lighthouse image. And using the balmy blue ink again, I'm going to stamp that, but because I just re-inked my stamp pad, I'm going to stamp off. Okay, so I'm going to stamp off once on the scrap paper. Maybe I'll do that twice. And then I'm going to place this image to the right
in that in that area so slightly high and to the right hand side and then I'm also going to add a couple other images so I'm going to take the smaller sailboat image and do the same thing I'm going to stamp it off. Actually, this one, I'm going to try, I'm going to stamp this off twice. And I'm just going to put that sort of in the middle, like so. Now, don't, don't worry that these are kind of vague images. That's what we're looking for right now. And then I'm taking the larger sailboat. And this one, I'm going to go full strength. And I'm going to put that right here. Okay? The last thing I want to add are the birds. Make sure I have these right side up. Stamp off twice. And I'm going to put them just right there. I'm going to do it again. There we go. Okay. So now we have our images. Now it looks like I've got a little bit of ink there. I'm just going to take my brush and soften that a little bit. A little bit of a halo. It's okay. Well, we'll call those distant seagulls. Not a problem. Okay. <clears throat> now that we've got that started, I want to add a few more details with my with my ink. So I want to do a little more painting. So with the balmy blue, I'm just going to indicate some some water lines. Just like that. And I think I want to have a, a distant horizon. So we'll call this the uh, coast of Maine, where you get all these beautiful little islands going back into the distance. I'm going to increase the shadow on the lighthouse, like so. But I, I don't want this to be in too sharp a detail. I, I just want this to be an impression of a lighthouse going back. And here is the island or the jetty whatever it may be that the lighthouse is situated on and i'm going to i'm going to add a drop more of my blue here it is Always check, balmy blue, balmy blue, all right. And I'm just going to add a nice, rich shadow under the lighthouse. Here we go.
gonna clean my brush off. Now if you if you like, you can leave it just like that, <clears throat> excuse me, as a kind of a um, monochromatic painting. Or you could also add a, a little more color. So if I go back to my palette over here, I can take a little bit of pink and just put a little sunset or sunrise on the horizon. Like so. And what else can we do? I don't want to go overboard here. I will be uh, doing a much more finished painting in the in the class, but for now I think we'll we'll call this good. Okay. So the next thing you're going to do now that you have your image ready to go is you're going to take some of your Tombow liquid glue. This is the the multi-purpose liquid glue. Just going to run that over the back of the card. And then I'm taking my shadow box and I'm going to place this centrally in this panel, the bottom panel. Now you'll see that the sides fit exactly to that six inch width, but you've got a little bit of a gap on the top and the bottom and that's okay. You're not gonna see that. So I just wanna get that in there. Now this is, <clears throat> this is a little bit damp. I recommend that you let yours dry but give it a good burnish on the back to distribute that glue nicely. Okay, so there's that. And now the next thing you're going to do is you're gonna take your little flaps and remove the If you've got fingernails, there we go. Remove the backing paper. And these are going to become your, your nice corners. So you wanna make sure that you line that up so that you have a beautiful join. All four sides. Okay, now what you're going to do is you're going to take the two side pieces. These are the sides that we did not cut the miter. And you're just going to curl that in, just roll it in and make sure, this is important, make sure that it, the, that this edge gets right into that corner. And you won't be able to see it, but you can feel it. Okay, and then once, once you're confident that that thing is, is tucked in there exactly where it needs to be, then you can press it down. Oh, I forgot something, whoops. Before you do those, take your glue 
and just put a little bit of glue right there. Okay. You see where I have that? Just on the, just there. Okay, now do exactly the same thing. Just roll that right in there. And once it's in, just press gently on those corners and let that glue set. And that's going to give you a nice, neat miter. And if it doesn't come out perfect, don't worry, because we're going to cover a bunch of those. You know, all, all of these paper crafts are very forgiving. If, you, if you're afraid that you've made a mistake, don't be. There's always, almost always, a way to fix it. And if you can't fix it, you can always start over again. It's only paper, so don't, don't get, don't get too freaked out if it's not exactly the way you want it to be. And in fact, a lot of those times when you have to fix a, a problem, you come up with a, an even better solution. So embrace the challenge. Okay, so I'm tucking that right up against the edge, and then I'm pushing down. Got a little bit of glue coming out there, just wipe that away. I always keep a tissue handy on my work area. Just hold that gently. And there is the beginning of your shadow box. Now, all we covered today was doing a quick background, okay? and then making the actual shadow box. But in the class, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to, how to decorate it and add a bunch of details, okay? And uh, in order to do that, you will need to have this set to follow along. So Sailing Home stamp set with the Smooth Sailing Bundle. If you don't have this, I will post in the description after I do the video a link to where you can get everything that you'll need to make this kit and uh, follow along. Okay, so that's all for now. We went a little bit longer than usual. So I want to thank you so much for joining me. I hope you liked it. It's a really fun project and it's awesome for Father's Day or for um, any of the sailors in your life. So I'll see you on Monday for Marvelous Monday. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And uh, check out my website. All right, subscribe to Notes, and you'll be able to stay up to date on all the upcoming classes and special events. So stay in, stay well, and stay creative. Bye for now.